Get ready for the best dollar store Christmas projects you've ever seen. Happy holidays, everyone. I am super, super excited today because I am sharing 30 of my absolute favorite dollar store projects for the holidays. These are the projects that I have made and used over and over and over again year after year and still love them. They all have kind of a modern Scandinavian vibe to them, as you will see. And there's a good mix of like holiday decor items and Christmas ornaments. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this. Let's jump right into the project. Let's start this off with one of my favorite DIYs, which involves these little Dollar Tree stars. Each package came with five stars and I stacked two packages together. So I had a pile of 10 stars and then I glued them all together with wood glue. If you want to be able to stain these stars later, make sure you wipe away any excess glue before these stars dry. Next, I needed to find the center of these stars, which I did by lining my ruler up with the peak of one point and the valley of the two points across from it. Since I wanted to make these into candlesticks, I had to drill a hole into the center of the star, which I did using a Fossner bit and a drill. I found a Fossner bit that was about the size of a candlestick and slowly drilled into the center of the star. Next I found some natural wood putty to fill the little holes because these stars are not being made into ornaments anymore and we don't need those holes on the edges. And when that was dry, I used a little bit of sandpaper to sand the excess putty, and then we were ready to stain. You can stain or paint these any color you choose. I really liked the natural wood, so I just chose to polyurethane them to protect them. I am honestly so proud of how these look. They will probably be on our tablescape this year because I just really like showing them off. Next, I'm gonna show you how I transformed these gold sparkly trees from the dollar store. This has actually been one of my most popular dollar store Christmas projects. The first thing I wanted to do was get rid of the ugly kind of balls at the top of these trees and then remove a bunch of that sparkle from the trees because that's just not the vibe I was going for. I just used a wire brush for this. I went along the strings over and over again to push most of that sparkle and glitter off. Be warned that whatever surface you do this on will be covered in glitter when you're done. And the final step for these beautiful modern and minimal trees was to spray paint them black. I made these a few years ago and I have used them to decorate every year since and every year I get asked where I bought them and I tell them it cost a couple dollars from the dollar store. Okay let's dive into an ornament. This ornament again I'm gonna say this over and over again but these projects are all super easy to do anyone can do them. For this ornament, I am taking tissue paper and paper macheing it onto one of these plastic ornament bulbs. 
I started by ripping up the tissue paper into random shapes and pieces, making sure they were only a couple inches long each so that they could easily fit around the bulb. Next, I grabbed some flour from our pantry, which is what we'll be using for the paper mache. Then you wanna slowly add water to it until you get a thin pancake batter-like consistency. When your paste is the right consistency, you can apply some onto your clear plastic bulb, put some tissue paper on top of that, and put some more of the paste on top of that. You want to be careful not to layer too much paste because you are going to have layers of tissue paper on top of each other and it will get quite wet and can end up ripping that way. So just be light with the paste, especially initially. Continue this on all sides of the bulb. Don't forget about the little neck on the bulb as well. And then I let these dry overnight. I'm not sure exactly how long they took to dry, but they were ready for me the next day. I used satin bronze spray paint to give the caps from the ornaments a nice antique look. I love these so much. I genuinely think people would pay a fortune for these at Crate and & Barrel and I made them for less than a couple dollars with supplies from my house and the dollar store. Okay, let's move on to a really fun decor project that involves all these little Dollar Tree bells. The other thing you need for this project is some leather cording. I tried doing this project with string. You can see that in a previous video and it really just does not work. The bells all get tangled and really close and clumped up together and it doesn't look very good. You want the leather cording because it helps the bells stay in place and helps keep the spacing even and just looks overall amazing. Then all you're gonna do is string those bells onto your leather cording. You can alternate between the small and large bells. And I generally switched up the spacing. So sometimes I would have four little bells in the center and sometimes six. And here's how it turned out. I love them. Mantles, trees, anything is elevated by a cute little garland. And this one, it just does the trick. It's so pretty. Next up, we are making some little tree ornaments out of dollar store blocks. I started by drilling a pilot hole into the top of the tall tree pieces. Because I was drilling in to an angle, I wanted to make sure I had a pilot hole that would go in at an angle first and then down straight. Once those were done, I used a drill bit that was large enough for my leather cording to fit through and just drilled right over top of that pilot hole. Then I used some wood glue on the bottom of some little bricks from the dollar store and it glued those to the bottom of the tree. I also used some tape to hold it together just temporarily while the glue dried. And finally, I stained these with my favorite white linen stain so that you could still see some of the wood grain coming through. And here's how they look all finished. They pop so nicely against the evergreen. We've all seen versions of Christmas tree ornaments, but I think this is a nice modern Scandinavian twist on it with the wood and the white. For the next project, I used a big evergreen wreath. This was before I knew that evergreen stems existed at the Dollar Tree, so those might be a little bit easier to use, but you can use the stems or the wreath. 
If you're using the wreath, you're gonna wanna get a pair of side cutters to snip all of those extra evergreen pieces off the side. And those are what we're actually gonna use for this project. Once you have them all cut, you're just gonna take the ends and twist them around each other. These all have wire inside them, so it's pretty easy to twist and attach them to one another. I twisted together five little twigs and that was the perfect amount for the size of little wreath that I wanted to make. If you're using the stems I showed earlier, you really can just fold one of those and twist it together at the end. Then the secret to making these look good is cutting off all of that excess greenery fluff. Cutting off all of those extra strands that are sticking out at the sides and in the middle really cleans up the wreath and makes it look a lot more professional. These look amazing as little gift toppers. They look amazing on place settings. Just add some velvet ribbon, put some cording around your gift, and you're all done. Moving on to another great ornament, I'm using these 3D wooden houses. My first step was to assemble these houses and see exactly where I wanted to drill so that I could turn these into ornaments. Once I knew where I wanted the holes, I used a drill bit just big enough to fit my leather cording pieces or ribbon and I drilled into the roofs of the houses. Next, I laid everything out and grabbed my flat white spray paint and sprayed the fronts and backs of all the house pieces. When you're done spray painting, make sure to put your ribbon or cording through the roof pieces before you assemble the whole house. They look so good all finished. Honestly, they match every single decor style out there. I really think these would look amazing on anybody's Christmas tree. When you see velvet packets at the dollar store, you have to buy them, right? I got some and I use them for a couple of different projects, but this is one of my favorites. I wanted to make some really simple shapes as ornaments and just let the velvet speak for itself and add the luxurious part to these ornaments. I used simple shapes from around the house to trace a front and a back for each ornament in each color. After everything was cut, I got a front and a back ready as well as a piece of cording to hang the ornament. And then I used my favorite glue for fabric and I just brushed it on so that there wasn't any bumps or clumps in the ornament. I'll link this glue in the description because it's amazing, but then glue your stem on and glue the other front or back piece of your ornament in place. And now you're ready to sew the edges. I used my sewing machine to do a simple stitch with a small seam allowance around the outside of each piece and I think just the stitching adds so much to the ornament and really helped finish off the pieces. Here are the finished ornaments. I really love these shapes and how they all look together. I also think they would look super cute as gift toppers and I just may do that this year. When I saw these little travel jars at the dollar store, it immediately sparked an idea for an advent calendar this is another one of those projects that I made a couple of years ago and have used every year since, so let's get into the project. 
I wanted to make a base for my advent calendar and I decided to use a scrap piece of MDF. I did some math to figure out how I would fit 24 of those little jars onto my advent calendar and then ended up making a rectangle that was 15 inches by 10 and a half inches. I wanted the whole advent calendar to look like a little house, so the next thing I did was mark the center and use my square to draw a roof. And then the final piece of this house was using a piece of scrap wood to trace a little chimney onto the top. Next, I cut out the entire house shape on the table saw. The table saw will cut a little deeper on the back side, so you can use some putty to fill in those saw blade marks on the back if you like. Next, I drew out a grid on the sides of the advent calendar so I would know exactly where I wanted each of the little containers to sit. I left an inch of space at the bottom and the sides and then put the containers an inch and a half away from one another. Next, I used a small drill bit to drill a hole directly into the bottom center of each of my little containers. I also pre-drilled holes into each of the spots where the lines of my grid intersected. I did this because that's where the jars will sit and I wanted to have all of those holes in place before the piece was sanded and painted. Now that everything's painted, we can put our screws through all the jars in the holes that we've already created. And then I used some stickers to label all of the jars from 1 to 24 and I cut some one inch paper that I put all of our advent activities on so that I could fill up these jars with a chocolate and an activity. Oh and remember those little evergreen wreaths? They look super cute at the top of this advent calendar too. Activity advent calendars have always been a tradition in our family and our kids absolutely love this one and I love it because it looks good. Just like the velvet from before, as soon as I saw linen at the dollar store, I had to have that in my cart. And for this project, I also used a couple little wooden blocks from a dollar store block set. I wanted to have a gift wrapped ornament on the tree, and I took my inspiration from the Japanese fabric wrapped gifts. And to make this, I started by cutting a piece of the linen in a square that was at least three times bigger than my blocks. Next, I got my favorite craft glue. Honestly, if you guys don't have this glue at home, ask for it in your stocking from Santa because it works so well on everything and doesn't get hot and burn you like a hot glue gun. I used the glue to glue my two blocks together and then I started folding the fabric around the gift. And don't forget to string your cord or ribbon through right before you tie up your fabric. I also put a little tiny piece of greenery because I thought it just looked adorable. And here are the finished ornaments. My next project involves making some wooden trees from these little wooden craft rectangles. I bought these in two different sizes so I could make two different trees that sit nicely together. I started by cutting the base piece of each triangle down to size. For the large triangle, I cut that piece down to four inches. And for the smaller triangle, I cut that piece down to three inches. Thank you. 
Then I use that same amazing craft glue on the edges of each of the wooden pieces and place them together nicely. Because this glue dries so quickly, I just held on to it for about 30 seconds until the glue was set. You can see in this video that the quality of the wood varied quite significantly between the different sides. So for that reason, instead of staining this piece, I decided to spray paint it. And I did spray paint it black because I love having black pieces in my holiday decor. I love these guys. I think they're just like the perfect decor pieces to fill a shelf or finish off a vignette or sit on the mantle. If you're looking for easy projects, this one is one of the very easiest. I used these little wooden nutcrackers that I found at the dollar store and honestly I just painted them white. That's it. That is the whole DIY. Obviously you could paint these with different colors or patterns, but I just really loved the stark white look and I know there were some similar to this at CV2 and Crate and Barrel and some stores like that and they just look so high-end and so impressive. See how good they look on the shelves and for such an easy DIY, love this one. For this next ornament, I'm gonna use these styrofoam wreath pieces because I had them in my craft stash, but there's lots of mason jar lids and other wreath options you can find at the dollar store. And then this leather fur trim was from the dollar store. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I would be using it for an ornament. Once I pulled all the fur trim off the roll, I put a small amount of glue onto my wreath so that I would have a good starting point. And then I just weaved the trim in and out of the wreath until the entire piece was covered. I added a few dabs of glue as I went just to make sure that everything would stay in place. And then when I was about halfway through, I added some leather cording that I was going to use to hang the wreath. I put this on before I finished the fur so that the cording would be hidden underneath the fur and I could continue to wrap around it. If you're looking to add texture or pattern to your ornament collection, this is the way to do it. Super quick and easy, and my children love them. They're not the least bit fragile, so they're perfect for them to play with. On to another great ornament transformation. If you have been in the craft aisle at the Dollar Tree, you've probably seen these houses or something very similar. I loved the shape of this house, but did not love the pattern inside. And I didn't think painting the inside would look good as an ornament. So my next thought was possibly to try removing the back. And it turns out with a little bit of pressure, the back came right off. It did, however, leave a little bit of residue. So I just took some sanding paper and slowly sanded away any of the leftover glue and paper from the back. I thought about painting this piece, which you totally could, but in the end, I actually really liked the kind of faux wood grain it already had, and I liked the color tone of it as it was, so I decided just to keep it like that and add some string. The scale of these ornaments is so great because they're larger than most of the ornaments that will already be on your tree, so it really adds something different, and I love the final look. 
We're gonna go back to a couple other themes with this ornament. We're going back to these plastic baubles and we're going back to a faux fur ornament. My idea was just to wrap this fur ribbon around the plastic ornament. I'm using my favorite craft glue linked in the description again because it sticks and dries super fast and it does not melt your plastic while you work. <laughs> This honestly turned out so cute on its own, but as soon as my daughter saw this, she had an even better idea. We had painted the tops of them black and she grabbed a little bit more fur and some pipe cleaners that we already had on hand and she turned these into little kittens. I mean, these are so adorable, right? <laughs> They're so cute. They'll be on our tree for a long time. We are about halfway through the projects. I hope you guys are enjoying them. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have brand new holiday ornaments and DIY decor for the holidays coming in the next couple of weeks. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss out on the video when it comes live. Okay, let's get back to the Christmas stuff. When I showed these houses before, what I didn't show you is that there were also several different house configurations and shapes. And I bought one of each of them so that I could make a little Christmas village. I assembled all of the houses and removed the bottom plate because I wasn't going to be needing those for this village and then I spray painted everything white. Next I grabbed some wood glue and reassembled all of the buildings gluing the panels together. Then I added some tea lights and voila, a little Christmas village. So happy with how this turned out and definitely will be using it for years to come. Anything I find made of wood at the dollar store, I use in DIYs. So it's no surprise that I'm going back to these wooden blocks to make some little DIY houses. I'm using these triangle pieces for the house roofs and I wanted to add little eyelets on top to help string up the ornaments. And I grabbed a tiny drill bit about the thickness of the eyelets I'm using and slowly drilled into the top of the roof. Next I got to work gluing the little triangle pieces to some little square pieces to form my house shapes. If you're going to stain these like I am, make sure to wipe away any excess glue. Then when the glue was dry, I quickly stained everything using the stain called Flagstone, which is a really nice light brown neutral tone. I made some of these into ornaments, but I also made a few just to stand on their own because I thought they would be really cute shelf decor as part of a little Christmas vignette. If you're turning yours into an ornament, the last step is to grab your leather cording or ribbon so that you can hang your ornaments up. The finished product is so cute. I love how the wood stands out against the Christmas tree, but I also love how they look as like a little mini village on a shelf. Super happy with this easy project. You can never have too many holiday trees as part of your decor, right? 
when I saw this material, I immediately had to use it. It's actually part of a dog bed, and I paired it with these little Dollar Tree bottle brush trees to make a brand new tree. I started by using my fabric scissors to cut open the dog bed. Once I had ripped the seam, it was easy just to pull it all apart, and I just wanted to keep that Sherpa side to use it for my trees. I placed the tree on top and rolled the fabric around it to get an idea of how much fabric I needed, and then I cut out that piece. Then I got out that same amazing craft glue that I will brag about all the time, put it on the edge of the fabric and wrapped it around the tree as carefully as possible. I took any excess material on the bottom of the tree and folded it inward so it was in line with the little wooden base. Finally, I took these little hooks that I had seen at the dollar store and used them as a pedestal for the trees. I just added some glue to the base and held the tree in place until the glue set. And here's how the trees ended up looking. I absolutely love the texture of them. That kind of Sherpa texture is so trendy and popular right now. It would fit in any decor style. Moving on to another favorite ornament of mine. I found this little tree shaped ornament and decided to trace it out onto some dollar store bristol board to make my own 3D holiday tree ornaments. Each one of my trees required 30 little cutout trees. I did this while I watched a Hallmark movie because it took forever, but if you have a Cricut or another cutting machine, I would highly recommend using that. It'll make this part of the process go much faster. Once you have all of your trees cut, you need to fold them exactly in half and create a nice straight fold line. Building out these trees takes a couple of different rounds of gluing. What I did for the first round was put a little dab of glue in the center branch of all of my folded trees. You can see once those were dry that the paper is nice and tight in the center and loose at the top and bottom. The next step we're going to do is dabbing a little bit of glue at the very top and then at the bottom branch and putting all of those folded trees on top of one another. To make this process a little bit easier for myself, I did these in groups of five or 10 at a time, and then I just repeated the process over and over again. Then once all of your little tree clumps are done, you can glue them together the exact same way at the top and bottom. And finally, you can put a dab of glue down the center of the back to hang your string or ribbon or leather cording, and that is what you're going to hang your ornament from. You can glue the two edge pieces together as well, but I thought it would be easier to store them if I'm able to collapse them, so I just held them together at the edges with paper clips. This might be one of my favorite ornaments I've ever made. I love these ones. They also probably took the longest of any ornament I've ever made, but it was worth the effort in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
next we are doing a paper craft. I found a whole bunch of holiday themed colored paper at the dollar store and wanted to try my hand at doing some origami stars, which I thought would look beautiful as decorations or gift toppers. I'm not gonna go through the whole folding process right now because that's in another video. If you wanna see it, check out the link in the description below. But these are really fun to make and once you get a hang of the pattern, you can just pump them out easily. How good do these look? I really, really love them. I think they would make a really pretty garland too or like just interspersed in your greenery. They're fun and versatile, and if my kids can make them and fold them properly, anybody can. I was really proud of this next ornament, partially because I've never seen anyone make anything like it before, and I used these little boxes of Jenga blocks. My plan was to make these little blocks look like a city skyline, just different sized buildings and high rises. So I grabbed a little handsaw and slowly cut away the tops of the blocks at different sizes and angles. Then once they were cut, I painted them all with some colors from a dollar store palette. I wanted the string to be as hidden as possible, so I drilled a little hole through the center of the tall high-rise blocks, filled that with glue, and then put my ribbon in there to dry. I also glued all the little building pieces together and let that dry. The final step in making this look like an authentic cityscape was adding little windows. So I grabbed this dollar store sticker vinyl, cut it into tiny little rectangles and then stuck all those rectangles onto the front faces of my buildings. Here is the final result. I love this ornament too. I'd probably say that about all of them, but I was really proud of this one. I thought it was really unique and really cool for any of our city lovers out there. Next, we're gonna show some really affordable DIY holiday art. All you need is one of these wooden canvases, some wooden letters, and some white paint. I started by grabbing the letters to spell Noel, although you can spell anything you like. I glued them to the center of the frame and then painted the whole thing white. Such a simple holiday DIY for anyone to do with so much character. I'm gonna go back to that dollar store linen for another really creative holiday DIY. I love Christmas crackers and I wanted to make some that were reusable and a bit more eco-friendly so I picked up some cracker snaps and I grabbed a toilet paper roll so I could assemble my own using the linen. The linen was already the exact width I needed so I just rolled my toilet paper up twice to make sure it wasn't see-through at all and then I cut the length. When you scrunch it up, you can see exactly how the crackers will hold. But before we put them together, we have to fill them up. So I bought some little tiny toys and Christmas themed things from the dollar store. I even wrote my own jokes out for the kids. I used washi tape to secure the fabric because it's also eco-friendly and then I rolled it up and tied the ends with twine and a couple little bells just to add some fun and character to them. Mm -hmm. 
I had so much fun with these. They were so pretty that I ended up just putting them on display, but they were also a ton of fun to open and use. And I know my kids loved them. When I saw these thick felt trees, this felt like a huge score. I was super excited about it. I bought them right away and knew immediately that I was gonna cut them up to make some 3D trees. I grabbed two trees of the same color and then used a ruler to find and mark the center point of each of those trees. Then I cut a line on one tree from the bottom straight up a little past that center point and I cut a line from the top on the other tree also just a little bit past that center point. Next I cut another line right beside the other one just wide enough to create a slit that was the same thickness as the felt. Once everything was assembled, I used some craft glue at the top and the bottoms of the trees to make sure they would stay nice and straight while they were on display. The nice thing about the felt is that you could still easily fold these away even after they were glued. Here's how they look on the shelf. Again, such an easy project, love the final results, and have definitely used these every year in my decorating. On to another fun ornament. This one I also love because it's a little bit versatile. It can be used on the tree or can be used as part of your decor. I'm making little wreaths out of these and I wanna make sure to cover those little connection points so that the entire wreath looks seamless. I grabbed some faux greenery that I had lying around. I cut off little branch pieces and then I used some of my favorite craft glue to glue the branches to the side of the wreath. I kept the design really minimal and modern and added a tiny velvet ribbon to the top of each wreath. Here they are all finished. I love the modern minimal vibe of these. They look great on the tree, but I think they look even better when they're placed on some art like this. I have tons of these printable Christmas art pieces available in our Etsy shop, which I will link below if you're interested. One of the very first projects I made in this video involved these same wooden stars. This time I'm making an ornament out of these wooden star ornaments, but I am elevating it a little bit from the Dollar Tree version. Each bag came with five of these little wooden stars and I'm starting by gluing all of them together into one thicker star and making sure to wipe away any excess glue that comes out the sides. This time I made sure to line up the holes because I am going to use it as an ornament. But first I wanted to stain the whole piece which I did using my favorite stain which is dark walnut. Creating one thicker ornament by stacking and gluing the pieces together really elevated these star ornaments. We're going back to a classic Christmas decor idea this time and we are making some modern looking snow globes. Mm -hmm. 
To make my snow globes, I grabbed these little Christmassy figurines that I found in the craft aisle. I also grabbed some faux snow and some little mini trees. For each snow globe, I picked one of the little house figurines and a couple different sized little trees to sit behind the house and make a snowy little scene. I used craft glue. I used craft glue to stick all three pieces down to the plastic lid insert of the snow globe. Next, I put a little bit of glue around all of the figurines because I wanted some of the snow to stick to the surface underneath. And then I added a little bit of snow into my snow globe. And then it actually looked like a blizzard had happened in there, so I removed half of the snow and did it again with a smaller amount. And here's how they all looked decorating our coffee station. I know my kids love these. It's just kind of a modern Scandinavian take on a classic Christmas decor piece. Next, I'm using some velvet to make some modern velvet candy cane ornaments. Because the candy canes at the dollar store are this bright red and I didn't want the red to show through under the velvet, I first spray painted all of the candy canes white. Next, I cut all my velvet into small one inch long strips. Since I made this video, I actually have seen rolls of velvet ribbon at the dollar store. And really you can use any ribbon for this DIY, but velvet gave it a really luxurious feel. So that's what I'd recommend. And then of course, you're gonna want two colors to keep with that candy cane feel. Once the candy canes were all white and dry, I was ready to start wrapping ribbon around these guys. I wanted to wrap both colors around the candy cane at the same time so that they would nicely overlap one another. I started by putting a small amount of glue on one end of the candy cane and wrapping the ribbons a little bit of the way and then folding any excess ribbon over so it was nicely tucked in. Then I continued to add glue and wrap the ribbon until the entire candy cane was covered. Aren't these candy canes amazing? The original red and white plastic ones from the dollar store just looked so cheap and tacky and here they look so luxurious with the velvet wrapped around them. Still one of my favorite ornament projects. Let's make another holiday tree. In order to have two different sizes, I use these tall glittery trees and these shorter beaded trees. The first thing I did was cut off this wire strand with beads. I don't know if you would have noticed it underneath when we're done, but I cut it off anyway because I don't need it. I also used some side cutters to cut the big ball off the top of the other tree, because again, don't need it. This project was inspired by this furry neck cowl. It is just, in my eyes, a large piece of furry fabric and had so much potential. So the first thing I did was cut off the strings in the sides so that I could take apart the seam.
Next, I laid the fabric down and rolled it around my tree so I would know exactly how much fabric I needed. I didn't cut off any excess this time because I liked the way that it overlapped and I didn't think I really needed to cut any off. Then I grabbed my Fabri-Tac, which is that great fabric glue that I mentioned and used earlier, and I just glued one side of the fabric to the other side. I cut off a good chunk of the excess fur and then just tucked the rest inside, gluing it in place. I followed the same steps with the smaller tree so that I would have a nice matching pair. Here they are, all finished. They look so good. You just can never have too many tree decor pieces during the holidays. Let's go back to those little plastic ornaments for another holiday DIY. This time I also grabbed yarn in several different colors. The plan is to make some yarn wrapped ornaments and to do that, I'm first going to apply some glue around the top of the ornament. I tucked the string in and started wrapping the yarn around it and then continued until the whole top of the ornament was done. Then I continued to add glue and wrap the ornament slowly and surely until I got to about the midpoint of this ornament. Once you get to the center, if you continue to wrap, you'll find that your string just keeps sliding down the ornament. So what I suggest you do instead is cut the string here, leaving a little bit of a tail, and then start a new string at the bottom of the ornament going towards the middle, making sure that the string is wrapping in the same way that it wrapped from the top. When the strings meet in the middle, you can just sort of tuck them in beside each other to fill up the ornament nicely. And then of course I sprayed the tops so that these guys would match the rest of my ornaments as well. And these are the finished ornaments. I love them, love the texture of them, love the colors that I chose. All this yarn was from the dollar store as well. And they look just so nice popping against the evergreen trees. Okay, that is it. Please, please, please leave me a comment. Give this video a like. Let me know what your favorite projects or ornaments were. I genuinely would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching and happy holidays.